whenever yeah Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. I have one small story. Yes, please. Uh, I have seen a couple of cases like this where, you know, people remember their past things personally also. Yeah. But why is it that everybody can't remember their past life? Is it that we did not have any past life? Or, oh, good question. Or did they did something in that life that they got the power, you know, to remember it in the next life? Okay, And good question. If now I want to remember my this life in my next life, if I have one. what to person has to okay yeah good question so why why can why why do some people remember their past lives why can't we remember and if you want to remember how can we remember yeah. yeah so generally every new life is an opportunity for the soul to begin a new chapter and the normal or natural way of living is that each chapter is like a fresh chapter so what we have done in the past comes with us as impressions even if somebody is a parent and they have children two three children each child has their own personality and you know they genetically the same parents are there but still the personality is different even if you consider there are two there are twins and even identical twins still identical twins are not identical they have a personality so basically Uh, that personality, at a, you could say, at a subconscious level, is shaped by what we were in the previous lives. So, because each life is a new way to begin, is a is a new chapter in our evolution. So, the normal way is that we forget. And uh, if you consider that way, uh, we have limited cognitive capacities. Even now, how much do you remember of something that happened five years ago, ten years ago? Twenty years ago, thirty years ago, we can't keep it all in the memory. So, so, so basically, to forget is our nature. And also, when we go through some traumatic experiences, then one way to cope with the trauma is by forgetting. Somebody has had some trauma and they can't forget, then that repeat, repeated remembrance of the trauma is a bigger trauma. So, death, and then going to another place and taking birth again. these are not very pleasant incidents for the soul so for the soul to not be traumatized by the past nature arranges in most occasions for the memory to be uh, lost to be it's not exactly lost it's buried deep within so our existence is three level there's the body there's the mind and the soul so the body at death is left behind and the soul along with the mind goes to the next body so the mind contains the impressions but often they get buried deep behind now usually when somebody remembers the past lives it's it's because the soul has not been able to process the event of death when death happens suddenly like somebody dies because of a murderous attack or somebody dies very young somebody dies because of some sudden accident so the, then what happens the soul leaves the body but the event has happened so fast that the soul has not processed it just like say if you come from india to america then the body has a jet lag is it the body is the biological clock is still in india whereas physically we have come to america so similarly we could say there is a soul lag <laughs> <laughs> so the soul the consciousness is still in the, in the previous body but the soul has physically come into this body and so usually this happens when the when the person has died a uh, sudden death or if there is something in the stimuli in this life which remind the soul of the previous life mm -hmm. then then this oh I, what is this i want to remember this and most of the children who remember those previous life they are very insistent i want to go there meet this person and when they go and meet then there is a emotional closure mm -hmm. and most of these people when they grow older they may remember their previous lives and sometimes they maintain connections also with the previous life but that emotional intensity is not there so they need a sense of closure okay this chapter in my life is over now this chapter will begin ah uh, so that's why most of us don't remember because it's for us for a progressive evolution and some people remember because of the not having processed the event of death 
and as far as can we remember there is there are some, there are some ways to remember there is called something called hypnotically induced past life regression that means hypnosis is a way by which our conscious mind is calmed down and then our, our thoughts can be directed toward a particular direction so now sometimes there are trained regressors who can take us back to our childhood to our early childhood and some of them can take us back to previous lives also now the problem with this is that in the hypnotic in the state of hypnosis we are in a very receptive stage so then what what we perceive at that time whether it is a authentic recollection coming from our consciousness or whether it is a suggestion from the regressor which is induced in imagination it's difficult to know that so that's a serious although there have been a lot of cases of people who had some trauma say somebody has hydrophobia just become paranoid when they go near water then by hypnotic regression they are taken to a previous life and then they remember oh i had drowned in water in my previous life and in that helps them okay this is why i had that fear once then that helps them to become healed of that fear so dr brian ways is a prominent researcher and he has he, he followed and many others have followed after that is i i will league doctor and he has been able to heal many people of um psychosis that were not treatable by normal conventional means now having said that even if somebody is healed there is no guarantee that that necessarily means that the event was real it could also be that it's like the way placebos work placebo the patient gets healed although they just given the sugar pills so the mind feels oh, i'm getting i'm getting medicated i'm getting healed so they get healed so that's why hypnotically regressed memories how authentic they are that's open to question now there are some cases and i have uh, documented them in my book where they where during hypnotic regression some of the subjects exhibit xenoglossy and xenography xenoglossy is the knowledge of foreign languages speaking and xenography is writing it so there is one case on person named marcus he actually wrote in a script that existed 1800 years ago and there are only about 6 or 7 people in the world who even know that script and he had no contact with that and initially he when he was conscious he said this is just gibberish and but his hypnotic regressor thought maybe there's something over here because it was very it just it looked like scroll but it was written like systematically written scroll so then he had to go to that that language expert and they found that this is actually a script and he correspondingly remembered those lines also so by hypnotic regression it is possible to remember but how authentic it is it will we will not, we won't we can't know for sure and there have been a few cases where people get haunted by what they consider to be their past life memories that's why the mainstream researcher ian stevenson is the main researcher in this field he said the past so he studied only spontaneous past life memories not hypnotically induced because in hypnotically induced you can't know that it's a suggestion or it's a recollection but spontaneously induced means the child suddenly on them their own says that and what purpose will it serve even if you remember our past lives maybe you could say okay that will convince me i am a soul that will inspire me to move forward spiritually well after i wrote my book i again did some study and most that these boys who remember these boys and girls who remember their previous lives none of them became more spiritual because they remembered their past lives yes i was a soul i had a previous life now i am living in this life in fact one of the most uh, perhaps well known cases you could say was of thomas andrews who became william barnes thomas andrews was one of the main designers of the titanic ship and when the titanic sank uh, he was blamed that his the design was faulty uh, there was one another jonathan black he was the main financer for that or he was the main arranger of the finances so he survived and andrews sank uh, along with the titanic now later on another person named william barnes he was born and he said i am the reincarnation of thomas andrews and he gave a uh, one of the best explanations available till now about why the titanic sank so quickly 
cause. Now, the Titanic was hit by an iceberg, but before rescue could reach, it sank. So he said that actually it was made, the ship was made of metal. And when he had been testing the ship before the maiden launch, at that time he had been hit, touching, testing the ship by hitting it with a fam, hammer at various points on the hull. And at one particular point, thun, he hit it, thun, resonance started. And then he said, he told Black that actually, at these points, this is vulnerable. Because if a resonance occurs, if there's collision and resonance crack, then multiple places it may crack. So we need to thicken the hull. So Black said, no, no, now we cannot, we don't have time for it. And then he pushed it aside. So basically, the, the, when the iceberg hit it, the, uh, uh, the, when it was hit by that solid snow, it triggered resonance. And that's why it cracked at multiple places. So anyway, Barnes also has many accurate memories of what all events transpired over there. But although Barnes has these accurate memories and he has got a reasonable theory to explain the sinking of the Titanic, Barnes has no interest in understanding his own spirituality. He says, I want to prove that I am Thomas Andrews reincarnated so that I can clear the good name of Thomas Andrews. That's his purpose. So in that sense, he said, Andrews was an honest man, but Black smeared his reputation. And I want to clear his good name. So in that sense, even remembering a past life may not necessarily orient one spiritually. So if nature gives some people some, uh, some memories, that's fine. Have they consciously done something? Well, I have interacted with a few children who remember their past lives. And for us, when we hear somebody remember their past lives, it's sensational. It's like, Aaj ki taza khabar. <laughs> you know? It's like breaking news. But for those children, it is quite disorienting. You know, who am I? And it's not a pleasant experience for them. So it's some peculiar combination of uh, factors that might cause some children to remember. So if nature has not given us that memory, then it means that for our evolution, we don't need that memory of previous lives. Okay.